Hello and good evening. Welcome to our Moravian Daily Text video devotional for tonight. And I'm really sure that you have been blessed by your engagement with this platform as we try to be transformed together through God's Word. Your time spent here, whether you're on YouTube or on Facebook, is something that God uses for us to be transformed together as we learn through God's Word. Um, we are reaching a crescendo of events as we go through um, the readings in the, in the past few days towards um, the end of this book. And we're going to go through uh, the last half of chapter 16. We'll go through verses uh, 12 to uh, 21 of chapter 16 tonight. And just to give you a bit of a background, at this point, we are seeing God pouring out his judgment over mankind. And, and, and you might say, well, that's a bit harsh. I thought God was love. God is love. God is gracious. But yes, he is. But he's also holy and just. You see, in the previous chapters, chapter 13, we um, came around uh, understanding what the beast is. It's how nations come together and exalt themselves through military might or economic power and and relying on themselves and not on God. And, and that is um, what I believe is meant by having the mark of the beast. That attitude, that mindset of having to rely on one's own resources away from God. And in chapter 14, we we came across how the, the the army of God, the Lamb's army has been set up. Crucially, in chapter 15 and the first half of chapter 16, we see how God reminded all of us, mankind, of the place that he used to, to judge uh, Egypt when um, the Exodus was being organized. I mean, um, the five... Uh, the seven bowls of God's wrath, as written in chapter 16 from last night. Sores, blood, fire, darkness. Those are images that are clearly depicted in the story of the Exodus. And if I may draw your attention to verse 6 of chapter 16, this is why. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. It is what they deserve. This is God's justice being carried out through his judgment. Mind you, in verses 5, 9, and 11 of that same chapter, we see God's character. Remember, this is the book of Revelation, the revelation of Christ. In all of these texts and readings we're having, we need to see God and Jesus Christ. In light of all of this, beyond the, the disaster and the catastrophe and the apocalyptic images, we need to see who God is. And in verse 5 we read, And I heard the angel in charge of the water say, Just are you, O Holy One. Just, holy. Just are you, O Holy One, who is and who was. For you brought this judgments. These judgments were brought about by a just and holy God. And in verse 9 and 11, we see what God intended to do by telling all of this and showing us this these images. They were scorched by the fierce heat and the cursed the name of God who had power of these plagues. They did not repent and give him glory. I believe that that's from verse 9. In verse 11, a similar uh, in, um, statement and curse the god of heaven for their pain and source they did not repent for their deeds i believe if they did repent for their deeds and give glory to god this could have been avoided two things we need to be reminded of god's holy and just and that he's also gracious to allow us for repentance now there are things that happen to us that are not good, probably not as bad and as tragic as the ones that's depicted in verse chapter 16. But I believe 
there are three reasons why bad things happen to us. One, because of our foolish and naive uh, thinking. We just, it's simply our own fault. We, we, we do things and we, bad things happen simply because of that. Another thing is because the enemy tries to attack us, just like the classic example of, uh, of Job being attacked by the devil. But also, and crucially, this is something that most Christians would probably struggle with. It's God's judgment falling upon people. Bad things happen to people who receive God's judgment. Yes, God is love, God is just, God is gracious, but he's also holy and he cannot tolerate prolonged rebellion. There will come a time when God's judgment will come. Now in all of this, whether it's our own fault or the devil's um, uh, plans or God's judgment, the key point to avoid and hopefully minimize the effects of these bad things is repentance. Get repent from our own pride and our own denial of our own mistake. Repentance from um, from whatever it is that opened up the gates for the devil to attack us. Because in God's hands, we are protected against the devil. Sometimes the things that we do or say opens up a gate, a platform, a foothold for the devil to attack us. But also in the context of what we're reading in, in this chapter, God's judgment can fall upon us, but in repentance, we can avoid the fullness of God's wrath. I pray that we will be a people that will be humble before God and repent from our old sinful ways. Now, we did say at the top of our video tonight that we'll go through verse 12 to 21. It's the last two of the bowls, the seven bowls of God's wrath. And in the context of what we've talked about, God's judgment falling upon people in his justice and holiness, he did so. And we read in verse nine and 11, how people often react when bad things happen, especially when God's judgment falls upon them. They cursed God. And what happens is in verse 12, the beast and all the people that rebelled against God came together to fight in this battle called the Battle of Armageddon. Okay, it's not just the, um, the a movie; it's actually a plane in Israel where most of Israel's battles were fought from invading uh, with invading uh, armies. Now, I'm not really certain whether this is an actual physical battle that's going to happen or just an imagery of the battle between God's righteous army and the army of the beast. But one thing's for certain, and this is why I, I, I kept it at the, at the end and keeping it short, whether it's literal battle or an imagery of a spiritual battle, the point is God's judgment will be such any army that stand up against him and his people will not have a fighting chance. We read in verse 20, and every island fled away and no mountains to be found. Such is the power of God. We read also, and great hailstones. Now I come from the Philippines. Hailstones don't come often. There was only one occasion that I saw hailstones and only for a few seconds, less than a minute. But this hailstones that we read in verse 21, great hailstones about 100 pounds each. Now, I don't know how big that would be, but 100 pounds falling on your head, it would really be painful to say the least. Great hailstones about 100 pounds each fell from heaven on people and they cursed God for the plague of the hail because the plague was so severe. What's the point of all that, Ronald? I mentioned about repentance. God's judgment can come, but in repentance we can avoid them. And even if they fall upon us, we could minimize its effect on us. God wants us to repent. But let us be reminded also, God's judgment is severe. People will curse God because of it. But we have a God who is holy, 
and just. He does not do things out of a whim. He does so with a generous and gracious heart. He could have easily done these things as soon as we made the mistake, as soon as we acted in rebellion, as soon as we said no to his ways. But no, his gracious ways allowed us to have an opportunity to repent before him. Now, the great armies of the beast, the nations that rebelled against God, can be in natural terms and physical terms, in earthly terms, be so powerful. But all of this power are impotent against the almighty, holy, righteous God. That is the God we serve. God's judgment will come. Do we have a humble heart to repent? Are we tied into the ways of this world that we actually have the mark of the beast? Meaning we rely on our own abilities and strength and resources away from God. I believe it's a time for us to reflect on our lives and see ourselves in light of God's word. We are called towards repentance every single day because we do make mistakes every single time. Let us pray. Lord God, we are reminded that we are frail and prone to make mistakes. In accordance to your just word, bad things may happen to us because of these things. Thank you for your grace and for your love that you withhold your judgment, allowing us to repent allowing us to have the chance to avoid the bad things that may come from your very hand, for we know your justice and your judgment can be severe. I pray that we would be a people that will continue to humble ourselves before you and trust you and rely upon you even when bad things happen around us. Teach us the way of repentance. And may we go back to you and give you glory for your goodness. Thank you for the ultimate victory that we will share with you as you overcome the evil one. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Hope to see you in church tomorrow. Till then, good night.